Hey, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Well, here at home from the Nebraska Library Commission. <laughs> Um, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the shows live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show and they are then posted in our archives, and I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can um, find those, access those archives and search and use them. Both of the live show and the archive recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think may be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. For um, those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. And this is similar to your uh, state library. And that is for all types of libraries. So we will have topics on our show that are for publics, academics, K-12s, uh, correction, uh, museums, archives, anything and everything. Uh, pretty much our only criteria is that we it is something to do with libraries, something libraries are doing, something cool we think they could be doing, uh, services and products that we um, like to recommend for them. We do have um, guest speakers come in from all across the country sometimes, and we sometimes have presentations from Nebraska Library Commission staff, um, and as we're going to have today. But before we do get started with today's show, I just want to share, uh, I'm giving this reminder every week to just remind everybody. Uh, here, uh, we are still, all of us are still in the um, height of the COVID-19 pandemic. And here at the Nebraska Library Commission, we are attempting to gather resources and information to help our libraries um, deal with that um, in whatever way they um, need to in their communities. Uh, this is our Library Commission website. We have at the top here, we're attempting to keep a list of all of our libraries, mostly public libraries, who's open, who's closed, who's got special accommodations, Wi-Fi in the parking lot, things like that, who has had to reclose. We have had that happen in our state, as I'm sure you, it has happened all across the country due to outbreaks have, um, coming up. Um, if you're a Nebraska library, keep us up to date um, on um, what you're doing in your library so we can keep that list current. But this first post we have here on our blog is, it is always pinned there to the top of the page. It always will appear there at the top for you to access. And this opens up a post about what we're trying to do. Uh, there's um, a list of a form you can fill out to, for Nebraska libraries to provide us with their information. A couple of maps we're generating based off the information we receive. But then there's this uh, sub page that is actually our page with all of our pandemic resources. And it's um, for lots of things, uh, how to school your kids, what can I do for fun, well, unemployment, health, benefit, business, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, since we're talking about libraries today, I just wanna highlight the second, second option here, what about my library? And this is a page we're just trying to collect anything that we is as um, available out there from the CDC World Health Organization um, that, that talks about uh, COVID-19 and then things specifically for libraries information from ALA OCLC IMLS OSHA whoever um, is here on this page so we have information about closing your library reopening uh, specific information for school libraries Hosting meetings, this is, now this is, if you're not from Nebraska, this is specific to our Nebraska state statutes, how our Open Meetings Act is. Uh, I recommend you check in with your own state if you're not from Nebraska. Uh, and then just lots of resources. As new things come out, as new information is released, we add it here. If there are webinars or recordings of sessions, we try to add it here as well. So uh, please do keep an eye on this page, check into it for any information you may need. Um, much of this information is good for anybody. It is not specific just to Nebraska, um, many of these resources of course, but just pay attention to the ones that do talk about, for example, uh, Nebraska's directed health measures, and um, that, that's just for us. Uh, I recommend you check in with your state library or your state library association. They may be doing the same thing for you. So let's get into today's show. Sally, I am going to give you presenter control okay. right now. Wow. So you should be able to show your screen. Now... See, All right, I, now you're on the, on the monitor that has the um, Library Commission website. That's what I wanted. I okay. might. I want, okay. 
I'm Sally Snyder. I'm the Youth Services Consultant for the Nebraska Library Commission. And I love to read and love to talk about what I read and I love to make lists of good books. So that's what we're gonna do today. Before we get started looking at the Library Commission's page, if you want a printout of all the books on my list, you can type handouts here in the search section and see how it pops in there. And the very top thing comes Library Commission handouts. I'm willing to share this page with everybody, but right now I'm the only one putting things on here and that's fine. So just look and see here. It says 2021 because that's when the summer reading program will be. So um, whoops, that's where the handout is. You click on that and you'll get a PDF. I wanted to show it because of the Tales and Tales little banner up there and everything is really <laughs> fun that came from the CSLP list, uh, manual and, and artwork. So this is how you can get to it, print it off, um, whatever you need. So I wanted to show you that. Now let's see if I can get my PowerPoint up. And I'll just mention too, there you go, perfect. Uh, that link, we'll also link to that when we put out the recording for today's show as well. So oh, um, yeah, I always link out to there, um, there'll be a link to the handout. So if you you, know, you didn't catch that there, um, that'll be available afterwards. Uh, but if you wanna try and go grab it now and get it ready for yourself, um, NLC for Nebraska Library Commission, dot Nebraska dot gov is our homepage. And that's how you can get do um, what Sally just did to go grab it for yourself right now. I just had to adapt. <laughs> My, nope. I had the wrong date. Can you All believe that? All this time I've looked at that, I haven't updated it to 2021. <laughs> oh, well, why not now? Um, and I also say uh, we had a couple of questions that came in before we even started, and you just answered both of them about they wanted to know where the book list was. So perfect. Yeah. Totally I know it's easier if you have the paper in front of you and you can circle, I want this one, or put an X, no way do I want that book, because there are going to be books on here, I hope, that people really want to add to their collections, and there's going to be ones that go, well, I'll be okay without that one, but my kids really love this kind of thing, so I know that that's going to happen. Uh, for people who are uh, hearing me for the first time, we get review books here at the Library Commission from a number of publishers, and we don't get all of the children's and teen books that they publish, but we get a nice selection of them. So that's my first place to go for titles for summer reading. I also look at blogs and other things that are going on. Check the public library. You'll see a lot of books on my um, PowerPoint here that have Lincoln City Library ownership tags on them because that's where they came from. And uh, if your favorite book for this summer is not on my list, it's because I didn't run across it because I'm sure if it's your favorite book, it was great for this list and I just didn't run into it. Mm -hmm. Also, I have a, a printout because I have to be sure to stick to my succinct points that I wanna make about a particular book and not ramble on for minutes and minutes because we have a lot of books to cover. So that's why you'll see me reading from my list. Sometimes I'm just glancing at, at clue words and other times I'm reading the whole text. So. That's the best way I can keep on time and keep us moving. And we're probably going to go long today. So if you need to leave early, it's OK. Come back and, and look at the recording. And you can skip up to the part where you left and, and hear the rest if you're interested in more of the titles. Yep. Uh, we do tend to, we've been doing these the summer reading program list shows for years here with Sally. And, um, I think pretty much every time we go over the hour that we have allotted for the show, and that's fine. Um, like Sally said, record the whole thing, and you know, uh, you'll be able to watch it um, with anything you miss later. Okay, so I'm going to get started, and please ask questions as we go along. Or if I talk about a book that you have had a great success with, the kids just love it. Let us know that. And if I talk about a book that was a big flop, let us know that too, because the people listening will appreciate your experience. Okay, so let's just see if we can keep moving. We're gonna start with fiction picture books. And this first one is so fun. Little Donkey Loves Grass Best. It tastes so good and it's crunchy and juicy and he just eats grass, 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 grass. But mom keeps saying, well, why don't you try some of this? Why don't you try some watermelon? Why don't you? No, he doesn't want anything else, grass. And then one day when he looks in the pond, he's green. 
because all he eats is grass. So his mom, he tries to hide from his mom, but she finds him and she says, okay, now you have to eat something else. So he does, and nothing is good until he hits carrots. <gasps> Those are great. They might be better than grass, and he's eating only carrots and only carrots. And guess what happens at the end of the book? I bet you figured it out. Um, and I'll tell you, we actually have a comment that someone just put in or write about this one right off the bat. It says, I love that some of the titles listed also make me remember some others I can add. Like the Little Green Donkey makes me think, oh, Wonky Donkey would be good too. Yes, that would be great. Good point. And that is what happens. Lammy is fast and can catch any chicken in the compound where the, she lives in Nigeria. But one day she takes too great of a risk, climbing into the branches of a tree. When she grabs for the chicken, she falls and hurts her ankle. Too much for her to chase chickens for a while. And that's when she figures out and learns that there's another way she could catch chickens. She doesn't have to run after them. So I like that while she was honored in her village for her skill and speed, she also has a little bit of thinking she does that helps make her still the best chicken catcher in the village. Oh, this is Erin Blabby, so of course. An irritated koala named Warren is adamant about the fact that koalas are not bears, please. As a matter of fact, Warren notes that Australia does not have any bears at all, except in the zoo, of course. His efforts appear to be in vain, though, because nobody's stopping from calling them koala bears. So it, uh, it starts off gentle, but he does eventually get pretty irritated. <laughs> and someone also says that, that the kids at my library love Aaron Blabby books for read-alouds, that it works very oh, well for those. That would be such fun, yes. Samson loves to make other animals happy. However, every time he is on his way to someone's party, he is too late to even have a piece of cake or play any of the games. He is slow, but he also stops to chat with the tree frog, stop the monkeys from arguing, and turn the tortoise back on his feet. So, one time he decides to hurry and he doesn't help anybody, and he feels bad about it, and he still gets there too late. His friends come up with a plan, they invite him to a party and he gets there on time. I bet you've already figured out how they did that. So finally he gets to celebrate with all of his friends. This is another remake book, it's hilarious. The dog has taken over my first animal book and made it, this is a dog. He rewrites all the pages, slowly taking over the other animals pages until towards the end they get pretty uh, irate and they chase him, they chase him away. Or was there a trick in there? Maybe he tricked them again. Kids, I think kids enjoy this remake. And, and of course, you can always have a good time saying, well, how, how would we rewrite a different book? But don't really write in the book, of course. We don't have to say that. <laughs> this is part of the Maisie First Experiences book series in that she, Maisie goes to her friend Penguin's house to see the new kittens. And she chooses one to take home and learns about kittens' needs and care. Colorful art and good information make this a winner. For And how can you not take one of those kittens home? I mean, really. I'm a cat, dog, all animal person. This is a sequel can, to Can I Be Your Dog? In this, Arfie finds a homeless kitten and reminiscent of the first book, he writes letters to people on the block asking them to adopt Scamper. The kitten walks each letter up to the door and on the next page is a person's reply about how it doesn't work. Will anybody adopt Scamper? What a sweet little kitty. This is another um, Pete the Cat book about a children's song. By, this time it's bunnies and it has an Easter hint to it, but you can read it any time of year. You'll see the Easter eggs, et cetera, flying around. The words and actions from the song are on the page so you can sing it or read it. And kids love Pete, so I think that this book, again, will be checked out all year round, too. This is another new Llama Llama book. They've continued her Anna Dudney's Llama Llama series after her passing away a couple, three years ago. And this one, it's cleaning day, but Llama Llama keeps playing with his toys instead of picking them up. So Mama says, what if she played instead of cleaning? And off she goes. She throws clean clothes in the air, drops towels on the floor. She dances around on roller skates. 
Pretty soon the house is a big mess and Llama Llama has no place to play. Then they agree, yes, sometimes cleaning up is important. But this is sure to be popular with the crowd who loves Llama Llama. Oh. Joe drives a semi-truck and Big Al, her little dog, is her constant companion. Until one day at a rest stop, Big Al wasn't quite finished sniffing candy wrappers and, and grass and Joe left without him, thinking he was in the truck. He, he heads back to where the truck was, but it's gone. And he knows the best thing for him to do was just wait for Joe to come back. There are some kind-hearted people who try to grab him, but he gets away. And just in time, Joe and the truck show up. So I bet she'll be checking for him more often now. Tichu has had enough of bunny siblings, bunny cousins, etc. And he leaves the burrow during the night. He's gone for a few days. Everything is different and new during the night and the next days. And so he decides to write his own alphabet book because his bunny siblings destroyed his book. When he's finished it, he realizes he is lost. And there's a little bit of a, a spooky quotient or um, clever puzzle quotient because the, as you see the, the trees on the page, so as he's writing the book, the trees are growing into shapes of animals. So that's kind of fun. And it, it might seem a little spooky, but just a touch. Um, when he, he realizes he's lost, he turns around and he sees his whole bunny clan behind him. They missed him and they came to find where he was and they are lined up a route back to the burrow. So he's happy to go home again. I'm gonna have to speed up, sorry. The little mouse travels around the world seeing different colors, numbers, animals, transportation. And on every page or two page spread, you're gonna have to find the mouse. I hope you can find him here on top of the blue house. But sometimes he's not so easy to spot. It's just a wonderful book of discovery. Jim, a boy, notices that people and their dogs go together because their names rhyme or they look like each other. But in the rescue shelter, Mr. Scruff has no one. They, he does not look like Mr. Scruff. Their names do not rhyme. But maybe Jim and Mr. Scruff belong together. It's a fun take on finding your pet and on how people connect with pets. And uh, just a, another good story of a dog rescued from the pound. This is a Nebraska-centered book. Fort Roberts, Robinson in Western Nebraska was used to train dogs during World War II. This story is from the viewpoint of one of the dogs and gives a sense of the training they received and the duties the dogs performed during war. In Major's case, he returned home and was retrained to be a family dog before he was returned to his family, and that's based on fact. The, what the dog did, we don't really know, but the fact that this dog was trained there and then came back there is based on fact. The last four pages give good nonfiction information about the training center and about Major. And there are four photographs included as well as a copy of Major's honorable discharge paper. So that historical quotient there can be a lot of fun too. This is also based on a true story. Jessica was hurt and one lower leg needed to be amputated. Um, she was working to learn how to walk with a prosthetic when she met a service dog and she signed up to get one. Meanwhile, Rescue was learning how to be a service dog. Once they were paired up, it was amazing. But then Jessica had to have the lower part of her other leg amputated and they worked together to learn the new things that they needed to know. This is a fictionalized story of the author who was injured in the Boston Marathon bombing and her real service dog, Rescue. So there's some information at the back of the book again. A gray cat wakes up, jumps out of a pile of cats, and announces, welcome to the magical time when everyone says meow. He gets five meows and one woof from a dog leaning into the scene. After he discovers that the dog will or can only say woof, he announces, new plan. Everybody says meow. One guy says woof. He gets a loud meow, a woof, and a ribbit from the dog leaning into the scene. A quack is next, and the cat says, welcome to that magical time when everybody says whatever they want. A fun surprise at the end of the book, there's a roar. It's inclusive, I like that. He is not, a, he at first insists about a meow, but then he says, you know what, let's all make a sound. Let's all be together. So it's a unifying story. 
A mouse never wavers and convinces a group of other animals that he is a tiger. When a real tiger arrives, the mouse claims he is, the tiger is, a mouse. This, then he gives names to the other animals that are around. The snake, it, he doesn't call it a snake, he just says, you, thin, pointy, hangs in trees. This is a banana. It's a silly, silly fun with a little lesson hidden inside. A variety of children note in rhyme the attributes they share with a friend or friends, mostly different animals, and how that makes them the same, but different too. Listeners will enjoy hearing about the differences and similarities and comparing themselves and naming the animals on the pages. So of course, you can take that on into um, other animals and talk about how we're the same and different too. A dog is certain that hats are not for cats and stands firm in his opinion, while a cat models a variety of hats to convince the dog cats can wear hats. After a parade of cats wearing hats and the return of the dog's hat, because he stitched it for a while, they all pro proclaim hats are for everyone, while a duck, a turtle, and a bird join them, and they all have hats too. This is just scary, not really. Three kittens have climbed everything worth climbing on their island. What's next? Going to Dinosaur Island and climbing dinosaurs. They don't see a problem with this at all. The narrator tries to discourage them, but they are off in, in their covered floating litter box, box to the island. They run into the snake and they end up having to try Plan D. And whoever has to get all the way to Plan D? It bookends with a new challenge, climbing mommy soars. There's lots of planning. It's goal-oriented. And they are determined, or you could say stubborn. This is a second book about Llama. Llama invents the Replicator 3000 because while he likes to cook, he does not like to clean. His friend Alpaca does. Once she is in the Replicator, he makes a second one and the two of them get to work cleaning his house. They can come by my house next. But Llama doesn't stop. Soon an army of alpacas are out and about. He opens his door to get them out of the house and they are everywhere in the town and the countryside. And people are not happy because they are extra cleaning. So he realizes he has unleashed the alpacalypse. That's hard to say, alpacalypse. Finally, Llama does the right thing and he unzoops the extra alpacas down to just his original friend. Did he learn his lesson? Not so much. It's just more silly fun. This is a play on the familiar folk story of filling a house with more and more of something until all you take all the extra away. It makes it seem like peace and quiet with plenty of room. Mia wants a puppy, but mom says there is not enough room. Grandma and plenty of friends drop their pets by to be cared for for a few days until they are everywhere. Will it work? Maybe. This is one mean aunt. He is angry. He yells at everybody else and says, stop doing that, go away, you're bothering me. And he marches away until he realizes he's lost. He doesn't know where he is. After, after kicking the sand and blaming everybody else for his situation, along comes a fly and offers to give him a ride. Well, the mean end isn't very nice to the fly at first, but finally he realizes the fly is going to give him a ride. And so they're talking and they fly into a spider web. That's the end of the book because there's book two. Ant and fly are stuck in a spider's web. Flea has just lands there too, having just escaped from a flea circus. But fortunately, flea can hop and hop and hop and bounce all of them out of the web. Fly gives both of them a ride, but he is headed the wrong way and he's not listening to flea. So at the end of the book, they are all stuck in the flea circus again. I sure hope there's a book three. <laughs> Some picture book nonfiction. This has good basic information with wonderful photos. Readers will enjoy seeing the baby with its family, learning how they get around in their environment. It's a good addition to your collection, nonfiction. This is an ecology book about the impact sea otters have on their environment. And it recounts the, the disaster that occurred after the sea otter was hunted almost to extinction along the California and uh, up the coast there. The sea urchins' numbers grew to the point that they destroyed miles of kelp forest, which impacted many other animals, species. Beautiful art and clear explanations convey, convey the issues and the lives of sea otters. 
one word on each first two-page spread with an illustration, and then a brief phase phrase on the second two-page spread, also with an illustration, that redefines the first word, followed by a paragraph of, or so of information. For example, with porcupine, the first word is prickly, followed by but gentle on the next page, and then some information. Beautiful art and clever text opens the opportunities for discussion. There are several books in this series. I have two here. This is just like cats and the other one is just like crocs. It's a look at what cats and people have in common and what is different. It includes some basic information about the lives of some several types of wild cats like lions and jaguars. And then as on the cover here throughout the book, it uses a combination of photographs and illustrations to convey whatever they're talking about. So they're both fun. You can see which topic you wanna have, which animal you wanna have in your collection. Steve Jenkins and Rodman Page bring us um, what to do if you work at the zoo. Each two-page spread features one or two animals and one thing a zookeeper might do for that animal, and they're not always obvious. Everything from brushing a hippo's teeth to pick up panda poop, because somebody has to. Listeners will be intrigued by some of the more unusual duties, like using a rake to gently scratch a taper's back. Who thought? Just as it sounds, it look, a look at for various baby animals and how they play. And the author demonstrates how play helps the baby prepare, prepare for life as an adult. This is in, from the Let's Read and Find Out series. For the winter, the Arctic fox heads north to the top of the world. As spring comes, she turns around again and heads south for the summer. It's an amazing journey of about 2,000 miles. And why would you go north for the, that's what they do, <laughs> just, kidding. just kidding. The first year in the life of a little brown bat is told more as a story. Full page illustrations convey the action in the text. And there is more information include, included at the back of the book. So if you need a new book about the little brown bat, Lauren Sprinkle is of course a well-respected author and this would be a good choice. Some beginning readers. Oh, someone had a comment about the um, one of the previous books. Uh, I just want to share before we get on to these. Um, sure. The Major Tale, about the dog, Major, um, reminds me of another one, Sergeant Reckless, the true story of the little horse who became a hero. Oh, I so, love Sergeant Reckless. Yeah, by you Patricia. know, when I showed that book to my husband, who was a Marine, a student, ah. in heart, at heart, and his best friend, who was also a Marine in Vietnam, and he bought the book and gave it to his grandson, because his grandson was fascinated with Sergeant Reckless, and that would be a great book for this. Thank you so much. Now I'm all off. <laughs> That's okay. Sorry, cool. you're fine. That's great. Back to beginning readers. Little Penguin is very excited about a new visitor to arrive soon. Because, you know, penguins and polar bears are at the opposite end of the earth. It's going to, a polar bear is going to arrive. His friends have heard some bad things about polar bears, like they have sharp teeth, are mean hunters, and tell very bad jokes. The little penguin is willing to wait and see because you should not believe everything you hear. He remembers that his best friend Franklin is called a killer whale. Well, he doesn't kill anybody, uh, maybe out of sight. When the boat arrives, a polar bear gets off. She has sharp teeth, but she is laughing. That's not scary. Then she tells a couple of bad jokes. <gasps> if it's true that polar bears tell bad jokes, is it true that they are mean hunters? Mm. Making new friends, being skeptical of rumors, and welcoming a visitor are all included here. Biscuit and his friend, a girl, must first build a snow fort. Then they can play in the snow. But when Biscuit sees a downhill race about to start, he hops in somebody else's inflated sled and wins the race. It's all right, though. They can all fit in the snow fort. And his friend, the girl, has snacks for everyone. Dogs, too. Just winter fun. Third book about the characters. I haven't seen the other two titles, but Fox loves to trick Pig. In this first story, he builds a high wall, and he places the doll on top. Pig sees it and hurries to get Fox off the wall, thinking the real Fox is up there. But he trips and knocks down the pile, and they all land on Fox. In the next two stories, Fox is bruised and has a bandage on his face. The second story involves another injury to Fox, again after his trickery. And this third story is both of them calling it a day. No more games, probably. 
Otter has a lot of toys, but a pet would be fun too. He asks Otter Keeper one at a time for several different animals, but each one will not work. For example, a lion is too scary and a monkey is too loud. Finally, they find just the right pet for Otter. It's a tried and true story that could prompt some discussion of animals and pets and their characteristics. This, you know, take a, take a minute, look at it, see the cat. The dog says, wait a minute, three stories about a dog. There's humor, a couple of surprising twists in this, and it's a spoof of classic primers, but it is in and of itself a primer. So um, silliness abounds in this book. Straightforward. This uh, brief rhyming text tells a, vari a variety of birds doing typical bird activities. For example, birds in the ocean diving, birds on the ice surviving. Bird facts are included at the back of the book. A bit of interactive book. The main point is that Bunny does not realize how disruptive he is and Big is trying to help him learn. The reader is asked to give Bunny a high five and later to tap him on the arm. So that's the interactive part. Helping Bunny may also help them remember to be quiet. Dog wants to play with the three frogs, but he keeps falling down. They send him away, but there, then there is a big bear. Time to panic! Dog keeps his head and uses one of the moves he couldn't do right earlier, and he defeats the bear. Problem solving and keeping one's head. Very brief text and repetition will draw in new readers. Uh, second book in this series is Goat in a Boat. You see Dog there. The frogs are happy to see Dog again and to see Goat in a Coat. Goat brings up a boat and many animals get on board, but not Dog. He doesn't think it will rain. It does. Dog climbs into a trunk when the water gets high and rescues everyone after Goat's boat is struck by lightning. Again, uh, basic text um, to, and keeps the reading. Jane Yolen has a series of books called School of Fish. I found this one at the library. The silver fish gets nervous as he looks forward to his band playing for the school. Will the fish kids clap? Will they boo? So this covers handling pressure and fear of failure, depending on your friends to do their part and standing up and giving it your best. So we're gonna move on to early chapter books. This is, um, Amazon says this is book one of nine. This is the only one I've encountered so far because it was a review book. Zoe is surprised to see that one of her mom's photos is glowing purple. Her mom tells her that she helps magical animals that live in the nearby forest. And now, since her mom will be gone for a week, Zoe can help them since she is the first person her mom has found that can also see the creatures, not only the purple in the picture, but the creatures themselves. A few days later, a baby dragon is left by the secret door in the barn. And Zoe uses a scientific method, which her mother taught her, to try to find out what is wrong and how to help. Sassafras the cat is very much a part of everything Zoe does. And during the night, Sassafras responds to a need the dragon has that Zoe missed. The puppy had two bad homes before finding himself at the rescue shelter. When a boy comes along to adopt him, the puppy is afraid and doesn't know what he should do. Barking and other things puppy do, puppies do got him in trouble before. Patrick named him Oz and follows the rescue worker's suggestions for helping Oz find his place and be happy. It takes time, patience, and music. Patrick's grandfather teaches music lessons and he notices Oz's talent. When grandpa played a short tune on his tin whistle, Oz repeated it in whine. So that's the, the catch that gets the dog back to being a regular puppy. This is a series of books. There's two out that I've seen, these two. And it's about a family who, Kate, Katya is eight, and they had adopted their dachshund dog, Ollie, a year ago. And now they want to foster other animals so that they can be normalized and then be ready to be adopted into their own homes. So the first one is Truman, an older lab mix, and Truman is good at finding trouble. And since this is the first time the family has provided a foster home, they make a few mistakes, but everything, everyone learns and nothing serious. And the second one is of course about the kitten and, and getting the kitten to be, not be so shy because he likes to hide under the blanket. This is a series, supposed to be four books. I've seen three. The first one is Kitty and the Moonlight Rescue. Kitty's mom is a superhero, and now it looks like Kitty is developing the same powers. She can understand what cats are saying, her balance is outstanding, and she can climb up the clock tower to find out who or what is trapped there, making a horrible noise. Book two is about 
The golden tiger statue was stolen from the museum and Kitty and her cat friends go after the thief. In book three, they find a beautiful, peaceful garden on the top of a building, but soon too many cats are destroying it. What can Kitty do? Now we have a couple of books in the Diary of a Pug series. Book one is Pug Blast Sock. Bub loves peanut butter and his girl Bella, but sometimes Bub is in the wrong place at the wrong time. How did he end up on the rocket that Bella was blasting into the sky? It hit the tree. And how will he get the broken wing part back, back from Nuts the squirrel? Peanut butter? Maybe. Book two, school is closed and Bella can't wait to go out and play. Bub does not like snow or cold. Plus, the new neighbor has some kind of monster pet. Will Bub go outside? Will he have a choice? <laughs> now for, for your, your readers who are going to be missing princesses this year, because last year we had plenty of princess books, here's a, here's a solution. This is a series of the first two in the series of, of what I understand will be eight books. Itty is excited for her party as she becomes a princess. But there is so much going on, she starts to wonder if maybe she isn't princess material. And in book two, Itty finds out she has to teach everyone a new dance at her, at her first ball as a princess. But she doesn't know how to dance. She doesn't know anything about it. What can she do? This is great silliness. A master of disguise? Not really. Agent Moose of Woodland HQ was called to find a missing witness, Terrence Turtle. He is a myth that Camel Chameleon just solved his 100th case, and a big party is being thrown for him. Agent Moose has solved 99 cases. He and his sidekick, Alfred, follow the clues, clues and eventually learn why, why Terrence Turtle disappeared and who has been holding him captive. It's silly, fun, and a good mystery, and I'm expecting more books to come from for this series. This is the first one. Here's another series, Jasmine Green Rescues. This is book one. Jasmine and her younger brother, Manu, live on a farm with their parents. Their mom is a veterinarian and their dad runs the farm. One day, Jasmine went with her mother on a call, call to a neighboring farm and Jasmine asked if she, she could see the pigs. She discovers a runt piglet that couldn't suckle, so she ends up sneaking it into her car, into the car. The piglet is soon discovered, but Jasmine has done such a good job, she is allowed to keep it. Her phone call to the farmer confessing her trick is a good lesson. The piglet, Truffle, is smart and soon learns some helpful tasks. And here's Button. Uh, one day, Jasmine and her friend Tom were walking with Truffle, checking on her dad's sheep, and a loose dog ran through the hedge, scared the sheep, and disappeared. It reappeared soon enough with a dead duck in its mouth. They later found the nest of decades. Some were broken, but carefully they brought the four whole eggs to Jasmine's house and tried to hatch them. Only one duckling survived, but... McTavish believes his job is to help his family to connect with each other. They seem to think that he should be following their, his com their commands to him. That's not happening. So he runs away to a lovely lake and forest area so they will follow and relax in nature. He's a thoughtful guy. Fiction for grades about two to five, roughly. This is by Joan Bauer, a well-respected author. Olive met Maudie, her older half-sister, two weeks before their father died. Now an orphan, Olive lives, lives with Maudie. Since they are adjusting, they had to move and Maudie has a new job. Getting a dog will have to wait until Olive learns about raising a puppy to later be trained to be a guide dog. Olive is determined to do it right and she gets lots of support. It's a sweet, positive puppy story that also includes the family changes and adjusting to a new town and school as part of the story. Wonderful book. This is Cassandra Animal Psychic Book One. Cassandra 14 has lots of changes to adjust to. Her mother has a boyfriend. She likes him, but Juliet, who is 17, his daughter, wants nothing to do with Cassandra. Along with that is the fact that Cassandra can communicate with animals and her best friend Sophie, who is going to move away, convinces her to stop hiding and share her gift to help people. She offers to help a boy and his father find their missing cat, Titus. The boy is hopeful, the father skeptical. Since this is her first try time trying to help people, it is realistic that she flounders a bit with it, enough to convince the father that she is insincere. But she keeps trying for the cat and the boy. I just finished this this morning. Yeah. Epic is 12, 
He is dreading the start of middle school at the end of summer because he had been going to a more discovery school, open discovery school, and standard middle school scares him. For now, he is helping his parents and younger brother and sister run their bed and breakfast in Carmelito, California, just named America's number one dog-friendly town, and a week of special activities is beginning. Soon enough, there is a mystery. Who stole the priceless jeweled collar from the famous TV star, St. Bernard, Sir Bentley? The kids are sure they can solve this, no problem. But there are lots of red herrings and lots of puzzles to solve along the way. Told from Lily's viewpoint, her opinions are sometimes quite funny. She is one of several puppies in a kennel with their mother at a rescue facility. She talks about how boisterous her brothers are. She doesn't like it. And that is one thing that makes her more aware and concerned about how frightened other animals might be when in bad situations. Maggie Rose, daughter of one of the rescue facility workers, can see that Lily belongs with their family. Mom, however, is convinced they need to find her a different home, even though Lily helps them rescue other animals. Um, I read an, an advanced reader's copy, so I did not see the illustrations, but it has illustrations in it. And there's a second book about Lily where, where he started his um, what, uh, Lily to the Rescue series. This is book one. So now Lily is an adult dog and he does live, she does live with the family. Fewer pages and larger type than the first book, this series aimed at slightly younger readers and could have gone in the early chapter books category with an illustration every few pages. But this picks up basically where the first book ended. Lily has an instinctive em empathy with other animals, especially when they're hurt or lost. She is calm and quiet and stays with the animal to draw the people to them. This time she finds a crow with a broken wing. Lily stays in the park to calm and protect the bird, and that is only the beginning. This is a wonderful book. Learning English, because Spanish is her first language, Letty Munoz, who's the, having in the summer after fifth grade, she is still shy about talking English with English speakers. She and her two friends are helping with some other kids at an animal shelter for the summer instead of going to their English as a learned language classes because the teacher thinks that they can move on now. Letty signs up to write descriptions of pets available, but so has Hunter, and Hunter is a bit of a bully. This, so this is about finding homes for pets, being yelled at for speaking Spanish, practicing English, feeling more confident, and standing up for yourself. All come together for a what will happen next story. And this book did receive an, an honor, a 220 Pura Bel Prey honor award for the uh, Spanish. There's uh, some Spanish words in this, the Spanish heritage book. This is a full color graphic novel. Trot and Captain Bill, who's the cat, surf together. One day when Trot was grounded, they crept out of the house for a couple of rides when no one was looking. They capsize and Trot gets a hit on the head from the surfboard. Before they know it, they have both gone far under the sea, enough to encounter sea sirens or mermaids and learn about their conflict with the serpents. The sea sirens are fascinated with Captain Bill and make it possible for Trot to hear what he is saying. This has a Vietnamese American main character the ever surprising Captain Bill, helping to re resolve a dispute that can end in a peaceful understanding and caring for a grandfather with dementia. While the storyline is complete in this first book, the last line is to be continued. So there could be more about Captain Bill. Another full color graphic novel, Katya is in grade school and she and her Mima have returned to spend the summer at their Alaskan cabin. Katya loves to read comic books and is not interested in the outdoors or making friends. After Mima sends her to the corner market for a snack and some time outside, Katya accidentally falls from the crossing lock into a ravine where she finds herself face to face with a Kodiak bear. I don't recommend that. But this particular bear, okay. <laughs> he is gentle and non-threatening and his hind leg is trapped under a log. She gets Mima and they lift the log using some rope and Mima's scooter. He goes home with them till Mima can tend his wound and soon is asleep nestled ne next to Katya. They are already forever friends. And when Katya and Mima have to return home early due to a family emergency, Cody hides away on a cruise ship to get to Seattle where they live. Can he find them? When their owner, Mrs. Food, that's what they call her, is taken to the hospital after a fall in the kitchen, the pets are sure they will end up at the pound. Then they find out one of the other tenants of the building likely has a stash of gold coins. If they can steal his gold coins, they won't have to go to the pound. 
heist planning ensues. Clever, humorous, thoughtful, animal-loving children will grab this book off the display thinking, how can pets carry out a heist? Oh yes, and how do you get the pony on the 12th floor of your apartment building? It isn't easy. Kizzy has always hoped for and wanted a pony. One day in the grocery store with her best friend, Powell, there's a pony eating donuts. Kizzy claimed him, quietly took him up the elevator to her family's apartment and decided that one light, night like that was all she could take because she had a rubber sheet out and she had straw or hay for the pony and she had to clean up. Yeah, they found a different place to keep the pony for a while. However, they real, she realizes that eventually she's going to have to return the pony to the owners. And she ends up walking the pony back to the riding stable he came from. But there's another surprise in store for her. This is about responsibility, sharing, and finding the right solution. And who hasn't wanted a pony? This is a book one out of four so far about Waldo and Sassy, they are good dogs. They keep the squirrels out of the yard and they try every day to keep their people home, but they always get away. Lately, the dogs have noticed that their boy Stuart is not happy with school. They accidentally find an old trench coat and a plot is hatched. They will go to school as a new student named Salty and find out why Stuart is unhappy. The dog's point of view as to what is good about school will make the readers laugh and their positive attitudes plus sometimes, sometimes helpful efforts encourage Stuart's Stuart to work on his dreaded big report and give a presentation. There's humor, seeing things from a different point of view, and an unexpected plot turn on the bully, who really isn't one, but he had been kind of bullyish in his behavior. So the next two books, they start a, a club by accident. They think of club sandwich when they hear the word club, not the same thing. They go on a class trip and they are in a stage production because I don't know why the teacher can't ever figure out that they are two dogs in a trench coat, but so far she hasn't. These kids will love those books. This is by a Nebraska author. This is a, where am I? This is the um, sequel to George and the Stolen Sunny Spot, though you, it's not necessary to have read the first book. George, the cat in the center there, continues to be frustrated with Felix since Felix does not see the need to patrol the farm and protect the other animals. Felix is the grayish cat up there in the circle. When Emma, their person, brings home a box with chicks and one Muscovy duckling, George is baffled by her behavior. Who needs them? Unexpectedly, the duckling imprints on George and she follows him everywhere. But over time, George, George realizes the duckling, whom he calls Kid, is a very good at patrolling and guarding. The coyote old mangy is on the edges of the farm and things come to a head soon enough. Good thing Kid is on the team. It's great fun and that duckling is a hoot. I just love that guy. Well, she, it's a girl, sorry. The Dormouse from Alice in Wonderland manages to escape the endless tea party and ends up in New York City. His name is Bernard Pepperlin and he finds a situation in the city that must be stopped before it happens. The weasels, AKA the pork pie hat gang, plan to stop time forever in New York so they can do whatever they want, whenever they want. Bernard and others are determined to stop them, but can they? Small does not mean unable. Step up and speak up when needed. Working together can accomplish many things. When Melly Nine and her friend Danny find a stinky bedraggled cat behind the local pet food factory, Melly takes him home and names him Bert. Bert is unusual. He bites the head off of Melly's dolls. He doesn't like cat food. Soon they are calling him Zombert, since he seems kind of like a zombie cat. This lightly spooky story is brief, but readers will learn Zombert's mission is to save the other animals in the pet food factory. And it has a bit of a cliffhanger ending. Set in Canada, Harvey, a Westie, is, gets out of the yard when his family is on vacation. He was after a squirrel. When he can't find his way home, he is found by Austin, a boy volunteering in a retirement home where his grandfather works. Harvey is the key to Mr. Pickering's past, which he shares with Austin during the afternoons. Mr. Pickering has always been grumpy and impatient, but remembering the past mellows him. The dog reminds him of the dog he had when he was young. Meanwhile, Megan and her family return home and she is devastated that Harvey is lost. Austin feels bad about not reporting Harvey as found, but he almost seems like Austin's dog and everyone at Brayside Retirement Villa loves Harvey, especially Mr. Pickering. Book two is 
Oh, Maggie does get Harvey back at the end of the book. Maggie's in seventh grade and she signs up for volunteer hours at the retirement home where Austin also volunteers. And she still hasn't forgiven him for keeping Harvey from her. But over time, she begins to see his point of view. Maggie connects with new resident, Mrs. Fredette, who still drives her beloved 1958 Chevrolet Bel Air. Maggie loves hearing stories of Mrs. Fredette's past and how she wanted to repair cars with her grandfather, even though in the 1950s, that was not done. Maggie's two best friends at school don't understand her preference for visiting Brayside or the school's student leadership club. They are beginning to leave her out. So there's appreciating history, sharing stories, and doing what's right. And Harvey's a great pup. Piper, almost 12, and her family have left Georgia and the home they could no longer afford. They're heading on the bus to a town several states away with snow and mountains on the horizon. The state's not named. When they arrive, they find themselves signing into a homeless shelter for the time being. Piper loves dogs and would like one and is intrigued by the love a dog baby has for his homeless owner, Ms. Jewel. Her parents are working hard, both helping at the shelter as required and looking for jobs. Piper soon makes friends amongst the other shelter Firefly Troop and that has a positive effect on others. While investigating, something's happened to Ms. Jewel because she's missing and the pup is by himself. This is another series. This is three books. The book one, for her 11th birthday, Grammy get, lets um, Birdie, the girl, choose a dog from the shelter. She picks a big one and names him Bowser. These books are told from Bowser's point of view and some of his thoughts are hilarious. In each book, they have a different mystery to solve. In the first one, they need to find out who stole the prized stuffed marlin out of Grammy's bait and swamp tour shop and why. A small Louisiana town on the bayou, some fun and unusual characters, an interesting mystery, and a good start to the series. The next one is Art. In this mystery, they need to figure out who broke into Birdie and Grammy's house and why, since nothing seems to be missing. And the third and final book, there is a report that a bull shark has made it up the bayou to the swamp, but Grammy says that isn't possible. Is there one? And why does Mr. Chronic so badly want to catch and kill it that he put a bounty on it? Oh, this is a wonderful book. Lexington is 12 and she doesn't remember anything before the tornado came through Lexington, Nebraska, after which she was found with an elephant at the local zoo. Roger, Roger the zoo train specialist, took her in. This summer, for the first time, she and her best friend, Fisher, son of some other zoo personnel, can learn to work with the elephants. Soon, the two of them are also quietly working to solve a mystery. What and where is the fortune that it was hidden at the zoo many years ago? A bit of magic realism is included. Lex sees the misplaced spirit of Miss Amanda and talks with her to learn about the fortune. And mysteriously, the wind seemed to talk to Lex too because of her involvement in the tornado. The good sense of place, Lex is working through a few issues besides the mystery and Lex is loved and cherished. This is part of, this is the only book I read. There are several in this series. I think, oh, it says four titles at this time. This one takes place in Texas. Dylan is 12 and he found a stray dog who fears loud noises, fears to the extent of crying and running away. His mom had said no to dogs, but Dylan hopes for the best. A stroke of luck just down the way is a ranch and Hannah has agreed to help tra train Brave so Dylan can keep him. His best friend has started trying more dangerous st stunts and keeps bullying Dylan into joining him. Dylan can't quite stand up for himself and feels badly about the things that they've done. So friendship, bullying, training a dog, and pet ownership, and working hard all come together in this book to uh, rescue this dog. Oh, Bella loved her family, the McBrides, and was always on her best behavior. However, due to misinterpretations and misunderstandings, just before her first Christmas, Bella was taken to the pound. Heartbroken to learn that she is unwanted, Bella struggles to rally for the upcoming adoption fair where she may meet a new family. It's a look at abandoned animals from the dog's point of view. And look at that poor Bella. Cyrus is in sixth grade and he was left by the firehouse door as a baby, taken in by Brooks Olson, the only one who could call him. His father is a well-respected well firefighter. He was the top football player for the football team in high school. And Cyrus is proud of him, but he feels like, like he himself could never be brave like that. 11 years later, a puppy is left by the same door and Cyrus knows it is his dog. 
Now the puppy is at the pound and Cyrus skips football practice to help walk the dogs at the pound, one of them being the puppy. He makes friends with the other girls who do this and he thinks about how he and his friends who are major into tackle football are no longer on the same page. Cyrus enjoyed flag football, but tackle is not for him. He is not brave like that. But lying to his father and coach is not going to work for long. This is a full color graphic novel. Nellie Bean digs a hole in the backyard and suddenly falls through it to another world. He encounters a very large orangish creature and wants to play. Unfortunately, the large creature named Nara is almost constantly under attack by the king's soldiers. Nellie Bean's steady optimism helps Nara decide to find a way to end the conflict. I love this picture here. And you, uh, that is Melly Bean all the time. Upbeat, happy, everything's great. Yeah, we're gonna be fine. A positive, do the right thing, upbeat story. Some nonfiction for the breeds. This is a sequel to Lesser Spotted Animals published in 2019. And this title also introduces lesser known animals to the reader. One two page spread for each with a few other animals on the page. Basic information about each animal is included. This could send the reader off to research more information on an animal they had never before heard of. A school library journal says, a delightful and highly engaging work. It was 70 years that Yellowstone National Park was without its apex predators. This title provides insight into the changes the park went through, park went through during those 70 years and how it has changed again once the wolves were reintroduced. Each two-page spread, well, really three pages, describes one of 13 well-known animals by listing several features of it. The description of the features are usually in terms of inanimate objects, such as marbles, a fire hose, or flypaper. The reader is expected to guess the animal before opening the page size flap to see what it is. Very entertaining and intriguing approach, and the author notes that when explorers encountered, encountered unknown animals, they often described animals' features in term, terms of well-known animals leaving the reader or listener to try to put the features together into a new creature is rather challenging. It's a new way to see animals and you could challenge your students or patrons to try their hands at this type of description for some animal that's not in the book. Each two page spread contains a file on one of 13 animals who are bandits, tricksters, deceivers, or spit on you when irritated. Don't worry, Detective X is on the case. It's upbeat and silly, and it can't, contains true information. It's sure to attract readers. What do you suppose those guys did that are on the front of the cover there? I have four books out of, I think, six in this um, True Tales of Rescue series for kids who want to read about rescue. Um, each title follows the same outline. You arrive at a facility, and one of the animals there shows you around and introduces you to other animals and humans. The four steps each place follows is rescue, recovery, rehabilitation, and release if possible. Good information on what animals need and how they are cared for at the facility. Choose the animal you believe your readers will go for if you don't want to buy all the books. And a note, just so you know, the, um, the goat book contains some basic information about veganism as the people who run the facility are vegan. It is informative, not proselytizing, but I wanted you to know it was in there. So there are also sweet senior pups and welcome wombats in the series. Those two I haven't seen. I want to see the wombat one. I have just a few teen titles. So we'll start with the fiction for younger teens. Lydia, 13, has just lost her mother, her father having left them six years ago. Now she is taken to rural Connecticut to live with her Aunt Brett and Brett's wife, Eileen. A rescue dog is added to the family a few days later, and this dog, Guffer, has problems. Is Lydia a problem too, she wonders? This is about settling in and finding your place, caring for others, keeping some secrets for a while, adjusting to school. It's heartfelt and positive. It's another winner from this author. This is a full color graphic novel. Two cats are looking for the door that opens into the lovely garden where they will never have to worry again. Beto is skeptical and explains that the door is just a kitten story, not true. Scylla believes and she's innocent and Beto follows along. This is entertaining as a basic story and this all takes place in Malta and another island. But to add in interest, the author illustrator encompasses famous works of art throughout the book with the cats walking in them at times. 
She alters the paintings a bit to fit the stories, but each one is identified at the back of the book, what it was based on, and sometimes you can tell. Um, beautiful and unusual and an interesting uh, double approach to this story. A couple of nonfiction books. These are both um, scientists in the field books, marked for grades five to seven, so it would be fine for upper elementary as well. With only 25 California condors alive in the world, the decision was made to capture the last free roaming birds and breed them in captivity. This book shows the progress made, how some condors still live in captivity and some are now flying free, and the many threats to the survival of the California condor. An overview of the efforts to study and support the wild and captive population of Tasmanian devils. A new disease named devil facial tumor disease has been spreading across Tasmania. The author fills the reader in on what it is and what approaches humans have made to control or eradicate it. The author also notes Tasmanian devils are not wildly unpredictable, but rather are like all animal species, gentle, willing to share, protective of their young, even if they do have a cartoon character. And one book in the fiction for older readers, Adelaide, the summer before her senior year, is on academic probation at Alistair Prep, where her father teaches. Her mother and brother Toby, who is an opioid addict, are in Boston where he is receiving treatment. Her summer job is to feed and walk several teachers' dogs as they are away for the summer. She is stuck in place trying to get motivated to finish her project, well, start it really, for one class and is recovering from being dumped by her boyfriend and continues to worry about her brother. The story is told via differing realities. One encounter in each of three or more universes could be pleasant or nothing occurred or it was a bad fight. It doesn't take long to know which reality is which. Typeface differences are the first clue. As Adelaide thinks on page 22, or maybe our encounter was in another possible world, that is in one of the countless other versions of this universe. It's intriguing, it's a slice of her life story where she is now taking responsibility, the dogs or class relationships or lack of it, caring about yourself and it really does keep you reading. So that was my last book and I didn't do too badly time-wise. Oh yeah. I'm <laughs> surprised. <laughs> no problem, no, we're just a little after 11, yeah. Um, that was great, Sally, thank you. So lots of ideas and I always love the timing of this session. Um, when you do these, because uh, it's right before the holidays. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I know, so you know, I know this is you know books for summer reading, but I'm always making notes about <gasps> books to get for all the kids I need to get gifts for this year. <laughs> so oh. dual purpose, absolutely. I was gonna stop sharing my. Oh, there it is. Stop. Oh, no, leave it up for now. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, okay. So, does anybody have any uh, questions or any thoughts of yours? Um, we did have some comments about uh, some of the books that. Uh, oh, was it the one? The llama one was really one of them was really well received by another estate's um, youth youth awards. Oh, um, right. Uh, oh, somebody is saying here, I, I really love your book talks and want to, can't wait to compare the list to our holdings. Oh, yes. Absolutely. I was going to say, you might, this is a great theme for next year because I'm sure you have plenty of books about dogs and cats and other animals in your collection already. So these are things that you can add for either, you know, hey, we don't have anything about crocodiles or, or how about that pony on the 12th floor? I think we need that book. <laughs> don't encourage the kids. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, all right. So, um, any if you do have any other titles, like some people that mentioned a few in here, uh, you know, share them with Sally too. Um, oh, someone said here's a new comment. My favorite interactive book is "This Is Owl" by Libby Walden. The owl that comes with it makes it even more special. Oh, I don't know that one. I'm going to write that down. Uh, this is Owl is the title. Libby Walden is the L-I-B-B-Y is the author. So, Thank you. It looks like it comes with an owl. That's nice. <laughs> Perfect. There's always, there's always you know, as Sally said, there's always more out there than are on this list. These are just some of the highlights and ones that she was able to um, um, have and be able to share with everybody. Uh, okay, well, we do have a specific question related to this. Um, 
What about the, do we have the summer reading program, the 2021 flash drives? Have those been sent out yet or are they? That's a good question. We have them here. They have not been sent out yet because we are waiting for the catalogs. When we mail out the, the USBs, we include the catalogs and your motion picture license certificate mm -hmm. for your public library. That's for public libraries only. Right. All together in a packet. And there was a snafu with the catalogs that were supposed to, they're supposed to be mailed out next week. So the good news about that is while we still have that data, if you order by December 12th, you'll get your stuff by March something. Um, that was back when we were working with um, a well-known company whose name has just flown away from my head. The way things are set up now is that the supplier, our, our supplier has all of the items there. And as soon as your, as your order is filled, it's mailed out. So almost instant turnaround. Yeah, as long as everything's in. Last year, they had to wait a little while for the puppets to be to arrive at the finished and arrive at the warehouse. So if you had ordered a puppet, all of your order waited until that was there. I don't mm -hmm. I haven't heard anything about anything being late to the warehouse. So hopefully okay. if you send it in and you can go online of course to the CSLP website and look at their um and you can print out their catalog there if you don't want to wait for your for your mail in thing sorry the the usb etc that's coming in the mail soon i hope we have everything set up ready to yeah. go yeah she says okay i will be patient thank you <laughs> um and then i have another question about it will there be um anything in the packet for online summer reading program if covid continues to be an issue still next year do you know if there's anything in there that specifically addresses what if you once again we can't do our usual I have not yet looked at the manual, so I'm bad, but <laughs> I'm going to catch up, I think. <laughs> anyway, so um, I don't know. I don't yeah. know if they have, I'm sure they had that in mind. I hope they did, because last year they pulled together some, some things that they got together quickly and we sent out mm -hmm. as an email to everyone. So you could locate that on their website and, and download that. From yeah, them. and you can oh, see here they've got that link still here at the top of the page, or well, in on the summer 2020 additional resources in response to COVID-19. So uh, they're definitely aware of that that that's an issue, a concern, an issue. Um, I'm sure you know, like oh, just like you, Beth, it's on everyone's mind that what if still by next summer things are still risky. Um, and I'm also sure. for Nebraska libraries, um, I have the access code for nebraska i will be emailing that to you don't share it with anybody please because it's just for public library our code is for public libraries in nebraska to access the manual online, online at their website so you have to have that before you can log into it and probably other states have already had their access code because once again things happen and i had to ask what, what is that access code again <laughs> so yeah I'm catching up yeah we'll get that said down to you yeah all right uh, any other questions or comments or anything you want to share you guys want to share before we wrap things up all right so thank you everybody for uh, joining us this morning to hear about all these great um, children's and teen books for next year's summer reading or for anything anytime you want to read about animals um, as I said, we uh, do record the show every week, as we did today, and the recording will be available here on our Encompass Live page. Underneath our upcoming shows is a link to the archives. It'll be at the top of the list here. The most recent one is always at the top, and we'll have a link to the recording on the on our YouTube channel, and I will uh, include a link in there to the handouts page where um, Sally's list was. But this should be ready uh, before by the end of the week. The recording and everything ready as long as uh, GoToWebinar and YouTube cooperate with me. <laughs> and all of you who attended live today, or and anyone who registered for today's session, will get an email directly from me letting you know when the recording is available for you to go watch. Um, and while we're here on our archives, I will show you we do have a search feature. So if you want to look through any of our other shows, look for a particular topic, you can search our full archives. You can also search for just the most recent 12 months if you want to. 
um, just, you know, just a rolling for the most recent year. Uh, and we do this because this is the full archives for Encompass Live. And if I scroll all the way down, which I'm not going to go all the way down because it's a huge list, as you can see, it goes and goes. Uh, this is our full archives from when Encompass Live first premiered, which was in January 2009. And so that's a lot, over 10 years worth of shows here. So if you do do a search in here, just pay attention when you're watching an episode, a recording to the original broadcast date. Uh, some topics will stand the test of time, like other reading lists um, and, and things, but some things, information may have, some topics, information may have changed. Uh, services or products may no longer exist, may be completely different. Links to websites and, and sets, locations may no longer um, be valid out there so um but just pay attention so that you uh, you know what you're watching um we will always keep the full archives up here you know the old information we're librarians we archive things for historical purposes and we'll keep doing it as long as we have the ability to do that here um, we do also have a facebook page for encompass live if you would, um, if you like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. We do reminders of um, shows. Here's a reminder to log into today's show, uh, letting you know when the recording of previous shows are available. Um, anything that's going on at Encompass Live related is on here. So uh, if you do like to give us a like over on Facebook. Uh, we also do post under other social media if you're elsewhere, Twitter, Instagram, I'm not sure where else, and we generally try and use the hashtag EncompLive as an abbreviation for anything related to our show. So you can keep buying that over there. So that will wrap it up for today. Uh, we do a thank you, Sally. Thank you. Sending good vibes from here in Massachusetts. Good vibes back to you too. Though. Hey. <laughs> Um, and here's our upcoming shows. Uh, you can see November and some of the December dates uh, scheduled. I'm working on uh, confirming some more, so keep an eye on our schedule. Uh, next week, we'll have Pre-Sweet Tech. Pre-Sweet Tech is the monthly session done by our technology innovation librarian here at the Library Commission, Amanda Sweet. And if you're a tech person at your library or interested in tech, this is definitely the episode to pay attention to. It's usually always the last Wednesday of the month. Um, and uh, next week, she's going to be talking about how to teach kids to podcast. Uh, or if you want to do your, start your own podcast for your library. So uh, definitely uh, sign up for that one if you're interested. And in any of the other shows we have on the schedule. Uh, so thank you again, everyone. Thank you, Sally. It's good to see you. <laughs> and hopefully we'll see um, everyone on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>